Hello, how's it going? We're just hanging out. We're having fun. You're my friend. Hello, friend. It's just you, me, and um, several million cars. So, I wanted to give a little update on my software rendering holiday project situation. And I figured I'd put together a little summary of where I've been, what we're doing. And so here it is. The title here is How Hard Can We Make Drawing a Triangle? We'll give it a go. Okay, so to start with, motivation. Where did all of this begin? Well, Soding made a YouTube video. It was basically just a coding session with software rendering. And this all stemmed from a, a tweet that he put out. Uh, here's a random thought I've been having for a while already. People were making 3D games without graphics, uh, hardware acceleration in 1998. Surely today in 2025, CPUs are magnitudes more fast than in 1998. So you can probably make a software rendered 3D game today that looks and performs much better than Thief and don't have to deal with the beep that is modern graphics API and extremely portable. It's not going to be cutting edge ah, gaming, but you can surely make something indie-ish, cutesy, low poly, no problem. I feel like today it's more feasible than in 1998. Now, if you're anything like me, you are probably highly susceptible to a tweet like this. My, my brain has a strong propensity to get um, colonized by ideas. And this one just latched on. Why not do it just for fun? I mean, I've done software rendering in the past. Well, the first time I did software rendering, I was working in Pygame in Python, and it was just drawing lines. It was a 3D world with like green lines. That was it. Classic. Um, and then at another point in time, I did some Vulcan stuff. But um, because Vulcan's floating point 8-bit format was a little bit strange. I could only get the colors to work in debug mode. And so I couldn't really push the performance, if you know what I mean. I wonder how much ambient noise is coming through here. We'll find out later on. But I figured, why don't, why don't we have a go at it? And really, like, I've learned some things. Why don't I push it? And, uh use all the knowledge I have. So, currently I've got a single triangle and it's, it's like a groundhog day because every day I wake up and I'm like, can I do more work on this triangle? Like we could, we could make a full rasterization system, but what's the point until we get the triangle down pat? So ultimately, here are some things that I would like to add. I'd like to add texture mapping, uh, MIP mapping as well. I'd like to add skeletal animations. I think that's very doable. The only issue might be formatting um, and make some sort of like Quake style demo thing. Should be pretty doable. I'm gonna do it in Ada. Why Ada? Well, for one thing, it's a fun language. I've noticed that anytime I'm on holidays at the moment, I've noticed anytime I'm on holidays, I always pick up an Ada project and I'm like, I'm gonna learn Ada. And I wanted to do that in a non-trivial setting where there's, there's a lot of moving parts and you have to, you know, do a lot. Um, also, the language directly supports concurrency. It's much easier to work with for multi-threading. Um, the thing I really love about the language, it's, it's performant, but you need to like knock it about the right ways to get it to be performant. And that's like all of my favorite languages like Python. You know, back in the day when I was coming up and I was learning Python programming, I came up with all these tricks for like optimization to trick Python into being performant. And I had so much fun. That was, that was such a blast. That was such a time. Um, and then elephant in the room, come on, dude, Resident Evil 4 remake, they were cooking. I don't love other aspects of the game, but Ada Wong, Resident Evil 4 remake, they were like mixing some special stuff. Um, so irony poisoning is real. I started out just joking about um, simping for Ada, but that character design is really, really cool.
And just a side note, why don't I spend another 30 minutes talking about this one bullet point? Lily Gao, the voice actress for Ada Wong, I was watching some of her other stuff the other day. Um, she was in this like indie comedy movie and um, I kept hearing her voice. She was in an office and I kept thinking, a zombie's gonna come in? Is the office gonna get shot up or something? It was such a surreal experience. But anyway, back to the task at hand. Drawing a triangle. This is the focus of today. There are lots of things involved, but today I just want to talk about triangles. So here's the basic idea. There are scanline rasterizers. We can see here this white gray triangle. Um, there are rasterizers which will go along the edges of the triangle and be more precise, but they're not very concurrent. So here's the general approach. We get a bounding box which tightly encloses the triangle. And then we loop through that bounding box one pixel at a time, you know, two-dimensional for loop. And then for every one of those pixels, we test whether the point is in the triangle. Now I've talked in previous videos more in depth about how this works, but basically there are things called barycentric weights, barycentric coordinates, and there's a test like there are three weights associated with every point, all three weights need to be positive, and then we're in the triangle. It's just like that. Okay, so as we go along, if we get a weight which is a point which is inside the triangle, then we shade it. That's the basic process. But um, this is completely naive and there are some optimizations we can make. One of those is that the expressions for the weights, mathematically they come down to linear expressions, which means we can get the partial derivatives, the rate of change of weight zero with respect to change in x or change in y or so on. And so we only need to do a full calculation at a single corner, like the top left corner. And then at that single corner, we also evaluate all the partial derivatives. And then we just use those. It's integer addition, basically, maybe inter integer addition and multiplication. So that makes things quite a bit cheaper computationally. And then we have another issue. And that is the bounding box. So as you would expect, the bounding box would have the triangle, but also a lot of empty space. So what we can do is we can subdivide the bounding box into smaller bounding boxes and keep going until either we know that a box is completely outside the triangle, so we can ignore it, or we have a box which we're not gonna bother subdividing it any further and we'll just do a full rasterization on that little box. So in terms of performance, that got me to about 100 frames per second. So here's a triangle reporting about 190 frames per second, but this triangle is not filling the whole screen. So if we had a triangle which was filled to the whole window, it's about 100 frames per second, but we can do better. So one optimization we can make is multi-threading. So like I said, Ada supports concurrency, but we still have reality that we need to deal with. And that is that when we spawn a thread, that takes some time and that's something we absolutely cannot do in the middle of a drawing operation where we've got a limited budget so what i went with instead is at the start of the program i spawned four threads and i had those four threads running in a spin loop so they were just in a while loop waiting 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 and there was a thread safe queue and when something got pushed onto the queue the worker thread could pick that off and do some work. And the main program would put jobs onto the queue and then wait for all the jobs to be done. Now, one of the tricks that I did as well to minimize the bandwidth usage in the communication channel between the program and the threads is I had this sort of command buffer. I know, I know. And on the command buffer, I wrote a bunch of numbers which were interpreted at runtime to mean different things. The first number was always the opcode describing which sort of command we wanna do. And then there was some variable number of numbers after that describing the parameters to the function. And that was a pretty good system and I was pretty happy with that. And that got me to about 500, about 550 frames per second which I was pretty happy with. But um, can we do better? And the answer is usually yes. So the next step from there was SIMD. And most of the math I'd already gotten down to integers and you can sort of speed that up a little bit, but I wasn't seeing any drastic performance differences. 
The biggest one was with floating point operations because things like floating point multiplication is very, very slow. So if we can parallelize that at all, that's a big win, um, especially fused multiply add. So if you're not familiar with that, it's doing the operation like, like something equals A plus B times C all in one operation, four floats at a time. Really, really um, performant. Um, now the big sticking point with this is that apparently, I looked this up online, apparently with GCC, you can just directly import the intrinsics just by giving some name. And the compiler will look that up and say, okay, here's the um, assembly instruction which corresponds to that SIMD operation. Um, you can't do that with ARM Neon. So I had to write my own wrapper to expose the ARM Neon intrinsics to the ADA program, but it got them and it seemed to go pretty well. By the way, I will publish this crate at a later point when it's in a more complete state. I'm on holidays right now. I'm just sort of importing the intrinsics as I need them. Um, but anyway, that SIMD stuff got the performance to about a thousand frames per second. So this is the point in time at which I'm pretty happy with this. I have tried to tweak this. I've tried to make the SIMD more aggressive. It doesn't seem to improve performance much beyond this. So that was my little investigation into triangles. So again, if we're just looking at the numbers, we got from about 100 frames per second, single core, no SIMD, to about 500 frames per second, multi-core, to about 1,000 frames per second, multi-core plus SIMD. But final words, this code is dangerous. Last night I started running into NAT errors. NAT is the compiler. So I was writing code where the compiler was finding errors within itself as it tried to compile that code. That was fun. Um, it turned out I could avoid them. Just I had some dodgy alignment set for one of my structs or something. But the other day I tried to plug my laptop in via HDMI and run this program on an external screen and all sorts of hellish things were happening. The the triangle was upside down, the colors like were all shifted and I was getting all these memory corruption errors. So this is like the equivalent of a Formula One race car. It has none of the checks and balances. It just goes fast. That's all it's designed to do. So that's fine. It achieved its goal. But um, just be aware that when you take these memory safe languages and you have to like hammer them around to make them performant, um, hammering things damages them. Anyway, so that's it. I'll leave that there. I hope you had fun. This was just a brief overview. Um, and yeah, I'll send some more videos when some more things happen, I guess. Cheers. Bye.